Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we're doing a recap of this week's news in the hardware and technology industries. The biggest news starting off the top of the show is the WD acquisition of SanDisk for $19 billion, making this one of the largest tech industry purchases in recent history. But there are a couple of other big ones that we'll talk about in a moment. So WD, the hard drive manufacturer, or Western Digital as you all know, has had a long-standing foothold in their WD Blues, WD Green, Reds, all of those drives. They've been in the hard drive sector for quite a while, but they've attempted to enter the SSD and flash space with minimal success. This purchase of SanDisk, which is an established and pretty well-functioning SSD and flash device manufacturer, the purchase should, quoting Western Digital, double the addressable market size by WD's current group. So that's quite a big business growth opportunity for them. And this follows on with WD's somewhat recent purchase of HGST, which is a Hitachi group, Hitachi GST it was called. That purchase of Hitachi's GST group allowed WD to acquire some of the highest rated drives when it comes to endurance. This is something that HGST has always been good at. So big news for the storage and flash industry. Other recent acquisitions in this industry would include the Avago slash Seagate acquisition of LSI and Sandforce. Other acquisitions include Toshiba's buy of OCZ, which was effectively a dead company and was resurrected by Toshiba, granting the flash manufacturer, Toshiba actually makes its own NAND, its own venture through which it can dispense storage devices and SSDs and things like that. In the world of computer graphics, the DirectX 12 update, as everyone knows at this point, has been long spoken about as potentially heralding an era where tandem graphics solutions are possible, meaning you could pair an AMD and an NVIDIA device together in a single system for effectively an SLI or Crossfire equivalent setup. Now, this is made possible by the shift to DirectX 12, the new API. DX11 does not allow this type of processing, but DX12 theoretically does. That doesn't, however, mean that it'll just work. It still requires driver support, developer support, things like that to truly get the most out of such a technology. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't test it either. So Anontech just posted their test using Ashes of Singularity's DirectX 12 benchmark to prove the AFR or alternate frame rendering potential of tandem GPUs from two different GPU manufacturers. The test showed, somewhat surprisingly, that when pairing an R9 Fury X with an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti, the performance delta was actually to the tune of 54% greater than a single GTX 980 Ti. That is definitely measurable and something that's worth testing more in the future as more games come out with DirectX 12 fully enabled. So very interesting news there and something worth following more closely as DirectX 12 continues to develop. Again, it's really important to understand that just because DirectX 12 will theoretically support an asymmetrical GPU configuration does not mean you should go out and build something like that intentionally or with purpose. If you're falling into that situation, sure, it's worth it, but I wouldn't go buy two different GPUs from different manufacturers just because AFR with asymmetrical setup is now theoretically possible. And my reasoning for that is because you still require stable driver support and the game developer's own optimizations and the engine optimizations, all three things of which will likely not take into account the potential use case of asymmetrical GPU setup. So there's gonna be less optimization for those configurations in theory, but it's absolutely worth doing more tests on and we'll be in that boat pretty soon with a couple of other DX12 games. Next up is Razer's OS VR technology, which is now shipping at $300 for the Hacker Dev Kit. This OS VR setup or open source virtual reality is, as the name indicates, an open source solution to virtual reality. So all the schematics for the device are available online and you can actually download and 3D print your own OS VR headset should you like to do that. If you have the electrical ability, you could also assemble the boards, do all the PCBs, all of that stuff because the schematics are fully available and it's all licensed under the Apache 2.0 license. This is available at $300 and that puts it pretty much around where the Oculus Rift is supposed to be when it's fully complete and available. And that means that they are gonna be head-to-head -head devices, but at the end of the day, Razer has told us in meetings that OSVR hopes to differentiate itself by creating an ecosystem, as they call it, ecosystem, of open source software and hardware 
for developers, hackers, users, and communities to build around. Another news item this week that we've already covered is NZXT's Hue Plus, which is an RGB LED lighting controller for use in cases or elsewhere in hardware configurations. And this includes, for $60, four LED strips, but you can expand to eight, and those connect via magnet or adhesive tape to your enclosure or whatever else you want to attach them to. And then plugging into that, or being plugged into rather, is the actual controller itself, which is a 2.5 inch SSD-ish form factor. The ish is there because it is slightly taller in this way than an SSD would be. So you will have some restraints when it comes to mounting it, say, on top of a PSU shroud where there might be a low PCIe expansion slot in use. Still, the Hue Plus we reviewed, it's on the channel, and we liked it pretty well overall. The $60 price point is relatively fair, and if you just want to blame out your PC with some LEDs, it's worth a consideration. Check out the video for more information on that. The final bit of news comes from Logitech. Logitech just posted its best retail sales growth since 2010, and the company, if you haven't been following too closely, has had a couple of rough years, at least in the gaming market. On the gaming side of things, Logitech, and they'll admit this, lost its way a little bit, but they've done a very heavy redirection of marketing, branding, and engineering efforts to produce new headsets like the G633 lineup, the G500, 400 series mice, like the Proteus Core and things like that. And the company overall is trying to correct its course as it pertains to the gaming audience. But there's a lot more to Logitech than that, and they just posted their best retail sales at $560 million of quarterly revenue in quarter two. And the biggest growths were 9% in North America, 7% in EMEA, and a staggering 26% sales growth in the Asia Pacific region. That's all for this news roundup. We're going to do these weekly along with our new game news segment that was just posted yesterday. And let us know what you think in the comments below. If you have anything you want us to talk about in Ask GN or other video segments, post that below and I will get to it. Check out our Patreon link in the post roll video. It'll be down here. Great support from all of you guys. We've had a couple of new patrons just in the last few days here. And as always, very excited to see that support swell. And we've even opened up a new Skype channel for group chat for those of you who are backing us and would like to get in touch with the creators of Gamers Nexus, talk to some of our staff. I have a couple of folks on staff, writers and otherwise, who are very talented, and we're all happy to answer your tech and hardware questions. So that's all for this time. I will see you all next time.